We are riding in a train. It's a train. How about that? Can riding in trains make you happy? <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Scott and Jeff once again talking about how to be happy. Everybody wants to be happy, happier. We all know that there's certain elements, secrets. There's a recipe to be happy that it doesn't just happen naturally. There's always some sort of if-then arrangement. Yeah, this is making me happy. Hey, you, no, seriously, you like that? One of the things that makes me happy is just you, you, velvet. You dig your fingernails into some velvet and just kind of go back and forth. I feel that little. Okay, that's oh, just yeah, me. The, that's just, kind of a, yeah. as a little kid, I remember doing yeah. that. Uh, we're talking a little bit today about the, uh, the concept of being up for anything and not necessarily being a total yes man like Drew Carey or uh, Jim Carey was in the movie. Remember the movie oh, Yes Oh, yeah, man? yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Where he agreed to basically anything anyone ever asked him, yeah. he had to say yes. Mm -hmm. So he's putting himself in these incredibly difficult and dangerous and often unethical and illegal situations because somebody said, hey, you want to knock off a bank? Yes. You know, and they might have even been kidding, and he says yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you have those kind of troubles. Can it make you happier? Science would have us believe that we have no idea. <laughs> we didn't do any research. Did you do any research on no, this? No, all I can speak from is experience. Now, you might be thinking, what are you, what are you talking about here? here? Here's an example. I just planted our garden. Now, we don't have a lot of room. We've got a couple of, uh, we got you enough use room. Boxes or we use have, boxes. We yeah. went out and got boxes. And My, have you ever done that before? Well, uh, yeah, but not to the point where we're doing it. We went out and got the, the mulch and the soil from Home Depot, and we got really you know, got the seeds and Which everything. Which is what normal people do. Yeah. But now, you hadn't done it. No. Typically, this is something that I would tell my wife, no, nah, this, this yeah. no. Nah. But you know what? Why not? Yes, it's just two boxes that are uh, about six feet by two feet. You know, we don't have enough room to have a big hold major thing, which is fine because when you're starting out with something new and you say, yes, start small. And then if you totally love it, which we are anticipating that we will, next year we're going to plant more carrots or we're going to add some broccoli and stuff like that. That's what we're talking about. It's interesting because you, you assume that you're not going to like it. Yeah. And yeah. why would a person who's seeking happiness do anything that they think they're not going to like? Mm -hmm. But as we kind of stated initially here, happiness is often the result of doing things. It's effort. It's work. It's getting out of your comfort zone that yeah. somehow magically brings a sense of euphoria mm -hmm. and joy mm -hmm. and dopamine and yeah. other things yeah. that rush around in your brain because you're actually up and doing things. Gardening, yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah. My wife yeah. is a, has a major green thumb. She's a, a, a master gardener. And I've always considered that her thing. But until I actually got up off my butt and said yes to helping her weed, which mm -hmm. actually anybody should do, and I have, I've weeded. <laughs> that makes me sound like a terrible person. We my thing is, is I'm in my defense, I cut grass. I'm like brute strength, labor force. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't make me understand the difference between a conifer and a, a juniper. Yeah. I don't even know what I just said yeah. right there. But if you tell me the grass is looking long, I know how cut. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can make a nice edge. Mm -hmm. Anyway, point is, we're talking about being up for anything. So mm -hmm. if somebody invites yeah. you to the opera and you go, I would sooner, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I would rather, I would rather do that. snack on Smith yeah. & Wesson yeah. and go to an opera. <laughs> just because you've never been or you don't think, you might just go. You have no idea. And besides, you might, your ear might be beautifully and naturally attuned to the Italian language. Yeah, you know, one thing that we talk about in our trade shows and our seminars that we do is, you know, I, it, a lot of this stuff starts as a task. Oh, this is something I've got to do. It's a checklist, right, type of a thing. But once you do it and you start to do it over and over again, then it starts to be something that you value, yeah. right? It's not a task anymore or a task-based activity. It's a value-based activity. And then you get to the point where, for example, if you've read Malcolm Gladwell's book, Tipping, point, you reach that tipping point where there is no returning to doing the things that you used to do or doing things the way you used to do them. It's just awesome. If somebody invites you to go take a walk and you're not in the mood and you don't want to, say yes anyway. Yeah. Because especially right now, if you're looking for ways to be happy, if you're feeling down in the dumps a little bit, not only will the physical activity of taking a walk really make a difference, but just the fact that you're doing something because someone else asked you to will raise your spirits. That's why we say say yes to things. Because if you're looking for ways to be happy, often resisting the urge to just, you know, flat out say, no, I don't, I don't paint. I don't 
I don't go to museums. Here we are at the Hale Center Theater in Sandy, Utah, probably this absolute most state-of-the-art community slash semi slash professional slash theater in the world. The stage uh, is raising right behind we us. We can hear this huge stage raising behind us. We're on a train at this theater. Now, some people say, I don't do theater. I don't go to plays. Why should I? I have Netflix. Mm -hmm. Say yes if somebody invites you to the theater. Say yes if somebody says there's a great uh, rendition of this is for the music man. Oh, I've seen Harold Hill. I saw it on TV with yeah. uh, the guy with the thing and the lady with the deal. Mm -hmm. Say yes anyway. Get out and do something yeah. that you maybe don't want to do. I remember the first time. This was before I was doing stand-up comedy. The first time I went to a club. Wait a minute. You I'll never stand -up forget stand-up comedy? It. Oh, hey. Can't you tell? <laughs> but it was just one of those experiences like, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm going to do this. This was just the coolest thing in the world. There, nothing replaces the live experience. So go out and try something new. What's, the, what's, the, what's one of the top three things that you want to... Top three things that I want to do that I think that I'm not going to enjoy, but I probably will, or that I have done. Uh, I have down here what I would like to do. Uh, number three is skydive. I've never jumped out of a plane. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, I'm uh, terrified of heights to some degree. I'm not afraid of heights so much. I'm afraid of falling from them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's legitimate. No, I mean, but some people like the height itself. Yeah, yeah. Freaks me. It, but it makes yeah, them loopy. It doesn't to me. But no. if I'm on a ladder that's 20 feet in the air and it's kind of rickety, that to me, I'm very afraid of. Yeah, that. yeah. So yours, your number three is similar to mine. Scaffolding is, scares me. Oh. Yeah, scaffold. Window washing scares me. Okay. That's what I mean by heights. Okay. But what did I say? Skydiving. All right. Skydiving. That's on your so, list. So mine is paragliding. Almost the same kind of a thing, but you know, you're kind of suspended there. And this is where I think it would really freak you out because you're just, you're just floating in air. And that's why I think maybe a, a balloon ride would also be kind of I've similar to mine. Have I've you done really? hot air balloons. Yeah, I, cool. I don't know. The I... landing's a little iffy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you, it's either fast or slow. Number two for me, if things that I would like to try to do, I would like to drive a city bus. Oh, especially in, like, New York. Or somewhere busy. <laughs> I just think it would, I've always thought it would be fun to be that guy up there driving that big, huge bus that takes up the entire lane without hitting garbage cans and mailboxes and pedestrians. That, to me, is a challenge that I, I think I would enjoy. Oh. What do you got? All right. So I want to try caviar. I've always heard caviar That's, this. Uh, the, it's the, the little eggs of the fish eggs, whatever yeah. they are. It's black. You remember the famous scene in Big with Tom Hanks? Well, no, 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 he's, no, he's spitting them, it out. Yeah. yeah. But I like fish. You know, I, I eat a lot of it, but I've never tried caviar. Yeah. People say it is so fishy. Ooh, ah, eh. <laughs> what else should it be? I better try it and see for myself, right? Must. Yeah. Uh, my number one thing that I want to try doing is, uh, it would be fun, I think, would be to drive an Indy car. Oh. And not even necessarily around the Indianapolis circuit there, but just somewhere, a really fast car that'll go 220, 225, and just, and just floor it. Mm. You know, because we've all done those video games where you're driving and it almost feels real. Yeah. I think, now that would be fun. Oh, drive yeah. through the city of San Francisco, knocking over people and, sure. and destroying things. I think sure. that... <laughs> You remember that scene in Foul Play? Any of you remember that movie, Foul oh, Play? Yeah, Chevy the Chase end of the movie. Who, who's driving the car at uh, the end? Is it, is it Chevy? Yeah, Chevy Chase is driving I mean, it, isn't he? I can't he? remember. It might be Goldie. And, the, and you got the two Asian people that are tourists oh, in the, the back of the car. The back laughing. laughing. Oh, yeah, yeah, Kojak, you got to see bang, it. Bang. Yeah, yeah, you got to see it. Okay, so my number one is uh, uh, snowboarding. Uh, I'm a skier. I thought about that. You know, I, I like to ski, and I've always kind of, nah, the snowboarding thing, they are a different culture, whatever, but I. I'm, I'm afraid that if I tried it, I would really like it. smoke pot. Oh, I that's would. What, oh, yeah, I yeah. see. I'd okay. cut my hair really short, shorter than it is now. So, you know, snowboarding, I think, after I got over the sore rear end, after falling the first hundred times, I'd and probably And I think like once it. you're done, then we probably should add one that we both had in common mm -hmm. that didn't make, we didn't put it on the list because we both had it. But that, of course, was uh, getting a tattoo of the American flag just right on our forehead. Yeah, yeah. That's a must-have. Yeah. I think any sane, Yeah. Why would you not want that? Yeah. All right, so we hope you are up for anything after this fun little segment, especially right here on the train, huh? So make sure and subscribe. Also hit the like button. It would make us so happy. And if you have any hobbies or interests that you've discovered just because you said yes and you like them, yeah, feel free share to share them, them with us yeah. Yeah, in the comments section below.